Good evening. I am very excited to see all of you. It has been far too long, and by far too long, I mean literally months. So this channel isn't really my main thing. I have other stuff that I do, and frankly enough, it took me forever to figure this out, and my microphone broke. So once those things were out of the way, I could continue with a video like this. I think this is gonna be a very exciting topic. I have wanted to do something like this literally my entire life, and now that I've figured it out, I am more than happy to share it with you. So what exactly are we doing today? Well, I've got Vert Manager up, and my own little customized ISO has already been installed on this machine right here. So let's start it up and see what it does. Keep in mind, all I have done is install the image to this. I haven't done any customization yet. Give it just a second or two. Lo and behold, would you look at that? It's got a customized desktop with my own wallpaper. Um, it's running OpenBox right now with my own theming. I've got a little taskbar here uh, that is Tint2, and I've got programs built into the system. So, if you want to be able to customize an Alpine Linux-based distribution that looks like this onto an ISO file so that your friends can install it or run it live off the disk, how do you do that? That's where a little tool called MK image comes in. And that was what this window was up here for. So let's zoom up a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna leave a link to this uh, page on the wiki in the description of this video, by the way. It's really easy to walk through. It's not that much of a hassle. A lot of these tools I've already put on my Alpine Linux uh, virtual machine, but I will explain this line by line. I'm gonna go ahead and start that up, actually. I think that might be useful for later. So what exactly is this? Well, Alpine Linux comes with all the tools required for you to be able to build your own customized Alpine-based ISO image. It's a little bit convoluted to get it off of the machine if you are using a virtual machine. If you're using a physical machine, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, however, we're gonna be using a virtual machine and I'm gonna be teaching you how to do that. My recommendation for you is that you're using a Linux distribution. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is, but if you're gonna be building Linux, it's better to do it on Linux. It just greatly simplifies the process. Now, I'm using an Alpine virtual machine like I mentioned. Here it is. And we're gonna to wanna to make sure all of these packages are installed. We've got the Alpine SDK, which is essentially just CMake uh, and some other stuff. We've got a few other pieces of the pie here. This is a tool for building the ISO image. Uh, this is a tool for the file system. This is obviously Grub, which is a bootloader. Uh, if you want to use EFI and you do wanna use EFI on newer machines, you're gonna to wanna to grab these tools as well. So far, easy peasy. Uh, if you've got a user, you might need to use sudo or do as to give yourself the correct permissions. On my virtual machine, I'm just automatically gonna log into my root. So not gonna be that much of an issue. I'll clear the screen so we got all this out of the way. So if I were to run apk add alpine sdk or something like that, it would just download the package and wouldn't give me too much trouble. Now what are, what are we gonna do after that? Uh, we're building a customized build user uh, that will have the correct permissions to build the image. This is more for security purposes, but I went ahead and did this as well just so that I could sort of follow along step by step with the instructions. So if you're already, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just log into the build user I made and voila. Now, when you see commands like this, just as a note, um, for people who aren't super familiar with the command line, you don't need to literally use VI. VI is just a text editor. If you wanna use Vim or Nano, uh, it's a lot easier to, to use. And if, you're having a, if you have a graphical uh, interface on your Alpine virtual machine, you can just use mouse pad or VS Code or whatever you, whatever you have installed. Now this right here is going to add the user, add it to the build group, this right here is going to give it the uh, correct permissions so that when we use the do as command, we'll be able to use it, for lack of a better way of putting that. 
Um, this right here will log you into the build user and this little hyphen mark will let you know uh, or let the machine know that you're going to be setting it up not necessarily as a permission change but rather any uh, profile or initialization scripts it needs to run by logging into that user it'll run that. Now this right here is a very important step. When you're building an ISO image oftentimes you're going to want to sign it so that people can't just get into the image, start changing stuff, and then claim that it's the correct ISO. Debian does this, and it's actually kind of a pain, because uh, if you want to customize the Debian install disk, uh, you have to sign it as well, and I haven't quite figured that part out. But frankly enough, if you want to do that for Alpine, uh, it's pretty easy. You just run this command, uh, ls right here. I'll run this so that you can see what it should look like. So ls apk keys. You'll see right here, um, I want to get my mouse cursor out of that. Sorry, right here I have a dot pub. Um, that is a key that is for creating the ISO. Uh, you'll have something like that in this folder. Now moving on, we're going to want to use git to grab the a ports library. I think you're installing git up here. You should have git on your machine. If you don't, you can use apk add git to grab the package. Um, this will put the a ports folder in your directory. So I'm going to clear the screen. If I were to cd, change my directory to home build a ports, you would see uh, these individual folders in here. Now all of the work you're going to want to do is going to be in scripts. So let's cd into scripts. Right now my current development scripts folder looks a little bit like this. Uh, we're going to walk through some of these commands. Um, have you noticed I have a psygocom folder? That is actually my GitHub repository that I've cloned into this folder. So when I make changes or I want to push changes, um, I just simply put the scripts in that folder or pull them out of it and then work from there. I'll walk you through that in just a little bit. Uh, so I apologize, by the way, for throwing all this stuff on you and then saying I'll explain it later. Uh, but there is a method to the madness, I promise. Now, let's go down here. This right here is going to make sure that the APK, uh, all your repositories are up to date. Uh, we're going to want to create a, a temp folder. Uh, perhaps I should have said this a little bit earlier. Um, but you're going to want to make sure you have at least, I believe, five or six gigabytes of storage in your Alpine virtual machine or on your physical machine. And you're going to want to make sure you have at least, I'm going to say, five or six gigabytes of RAM on your Alpine-based machine. Um, part of this is because it's going to basically be generating the image in your RAM. And if you start adding too many packages, uh, your RAM might run out of memory and it'll throw a weird error and you won't be able to fix it. So as much storage and especially as much RAM as you can give the Alpine machine that you're using for building, uh, you will be fine. So we're going to make sure that the temp directory environmental variable is set to uh, this temp folder. Now, profile name. This is going to be a variable that becomes very relevant in the future. Now what I did for my scripts is I ran this command essentially just wholesale and I set, instead of NAS, I set my value to SIGO, S-A-I-G-O, because that's the project I'm working on. Now uh, this will work for, or at least it's expecting to see NAS, but you can change it whatever you want as long as you keep the conventions the same. This long command right here is going to create a uh, make image.profileName.sh file. If you're using my tutorial, you don't actually need to run this command. Instead, what you can do is you can go into your little virtual machine like this, and you can run git clone https www.github.com. GitHub.com. Can't type today. E. Howard Hill. And I believe it is Psygocom. Now, the link, like I said earlier, is in the description. 
Um, once you run this, it'll clone my repository into this folder here. Let's cd into my folder. I'll show you what this looks like in the GNOME file explorer so you can see it a little bit more easily. Um, but these are all of the files I have in my repo. Um, I'll just copy these scripts like this uh, makeimage.sygo.sh into the parent directory using something like copy dot 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 means parent. It'll copy it up. Um, and once it's there, you can just use chmod plus x make image dot I think it's sorry. Voila, now it's executable. But if I don't have this code inside my script, then what do I have? Well, that's why I'm going to take um, VS Code and I'm going to drag it over here. And we're going to walk through it together. So, making this a little bigger. Waha. Profile underscore Psygo. Profile abbreviation equals Psygo. That is how it knows to look for the script when you use the profile name established by the environmental variable. We're going to see, uh, I, I based this on the extended Alpine script, so it has some of that boilerplate in there. I didn't really need to change it, so I didn't. This right here identifies which target architectures it is designed to work with. Um, here are some kernel add-ons. I'm using the Z file system in X tables. Um, some boot add-ons. You probably won't need to change these. You can keep these exactly the same. This is where it gets more interesting. Now, if you've noticed uh, here at the bottom, I believe, uh, I think, well, it might be here at the top. Um, profile standard. What this line up here at the top does is it's actually reading from the file named makeimage.standard.sh and all of its properties, packages, additional libraries, it's importing. So the standard Alpine image is being imported into this. I'm just adding a bunch of extra stuff. Uh, for example, curl, tmux, all these tools are not going to be on the image by default or loaded into memory by default. Um, so I want this image that I'm creating to have all these extra packages so we can have some fun. Now I separated out the ones that we need to be using for our little graphical environment because the graphical environment by all means does not come default uh, when you're using this tool. I have xorg server. That is the x server tool, which is, you know, loads uh, your, your interface just in general on your screen. Um, XF86 input lib input. These are your drivers for your mouse, uh, your keyboard, uh, your display, some of your displays. Um, EU dev, Mesa. So these are just, this is a graphics driver. Openbox is the window manager we're using. Um, Xterm is a the terminal emulator, font noto. You'll notice these three packages if you go to the, excuse me, the Alpine Linux uh, wiki and you look up the Openbox installation guide. Uh, it'll recommend uh, Openbox, Xterm, and then a font. These are all video drivers. This is uh, frame buffer dev. VESA and the Nouveau is an NVIDIA driver in case you have an NVIDIA card. This right here is a tool for your uh, touchpad on a laptop. Uh, those are synaptics means touchpad essentially. It's the company that makes a lot of them. Uh, VM mouse in case you're using a virtual machine. Uh, EV dev uh, that'll be useful for later. And then video Intel in case you're using Intel memory, which I was using on one of my machines, and so I just kind of added this after the fact. SDDM is not required, but it is very, very useful uh, for our purposes. It is a display manager, so that handles automatically logging into the machine. So we don't have to log in on the command line just to get into the interface. Um, ALSA utils and ALSA config work together with the Pulse Audio utils and everything so that we have sound. Uh, this will work. This has sound by default. Uh, and then finally, here's a little volume control tool I wanted to put on there. FEH is, a, is an image tool. Uh, it runs the wallpaper. 
Tint 2 is the tool we're using for our little taskbar down there at the bottom. And then I'm including Firefox, uh, especially for testing purposes. This is really useful. I like loading up YouTube and then playing a video in the background just to, to see if the audio works, you know? You want to keep these uh, exactly the way this is written. You don't want to touch this part, uh, nor do you want to touch this part. This right here is not in the default make image script, uh, but it will include uh, a reference to a second script, which we'll, we'll get into in a second. The second script is what's going to have all the magic to make the system come up the way we're expecting it to, and it is twice as long. So let's load that into here and walk through that, shall we? Hostname. Now you can set this to whatever you want your system to be called. I'm calling it Saigo. Like I mentioned, that's the name of my project. Keep that the way it is. This is a shell script, so we're going to have a couple of functions in here. Just leave them the way they are. Um, cleanup is for removing your temporary directory. Uh, make file allows you to just make a file and set the correct permissions to it. Just leave that as it is. RC add is sort of boilerplate that allows you to add open RC scripts. It's once again, boilerplate, don't touch it. Temp is set to this temporary directory. And what we're doing here is we're essentially creating a temporary directory that we're then going to compress into a file that will be loaded alongside Alpine Linux when you are booting up the machine. Now this is super duper 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 useful when you want to build a system that just sort of boots into a GUI. Even if it means it takes up, unfortunately, a lot of RAM at first. Now we're going to be creating a couple of directories. If you notice, I'm using this, uh, prefixing it with this temporary uh, variable. Uh, you have to create every single folder that you want to then populate. I have not had a lot of luck creating other folders uh, other than children of the etc folder. So if you have stuff you want to eventually pull out, I recommend putting it in there. And I'll walk you through what exactly that means later on. Now in my little folder here, and this corresponds to my GitHub repository, I have this script. I've taken my configuration for my open box in Tint2, the way I want it to be set up, and I've compressed the folder structure as a tar.gz file. I have my little wallpaper here, I've got some scripts, I got a Python script, and then finally my make image. Now, I'm moving over here uh, from my unpacked GitHub repository into this temporary folder, so we're able to move it onto the ISO file, as well as the compressed configuration for Tint2 and OpenBox. This right here creates the file that'll represent your host name. Uh, this right here creates the file that'll represent your network interfaces. Um, this right here, and this is a very important one, uh, represents your world file. A package will not be immediately available to you until you have put it into this file. Now, if you have a package in your make image and you have not put it here, you can use apk add package name in your command line to grab it and it will pull it from the USB stick and not from the internet. However, it will not be immediately available unless it's in this file. You notice this is kind of long. That's because in order to get your graphics up, you have to have uh, quite a few different tools. Uh, we obviously have base Alpine, X server, and then a bunch of our drivers here, um, open box, X term, the fonts, uh, wallpaper, blah, 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 blah. And then a Getty. I'll explain what I'm doing with AGetty in just a second. Now, I actually customized my init tab. I do not typically recommend doing this as it can break your system. Uh, not the development system, but the ISO. Um, however, it's pretty easy to tweak and then get right. And once you've got it right, no need to worry about it anymore. Um, so what do we got here? Uh, this controls what happens when your system boots up, uh, which run level of your OpenRC scripts need to run, uh, right here, if you noticed, I'm actually using a Getty, not Getty, for my first TTY. Why is this? Because I am auto-logging into the root user. This is a very important step because otherwise when you hand the ISO to people, they'll have to type in root and then just go from there. And that's, that is obnoxious. Uh, so what this does is it just auto-logs you in as the root. Now, when you install the system, I would recommend not doing that. Uh, this more or less is just a boilerplate to get you started. 
Uh, it's not the most secure solution. In fact, Chrome will not run uh, under this solution without a little thing saying that you're okay with running it as root. Uh, but Firefox will load just fine. So moving on, we are creating a .xinitrc. xinitrc is a file that when placed in your home directory automatically runs when you run the startx command, which opens up your x server. So what are we doing here in this xinitrc? We are loading in pulse audio. I'm doing it as a daemon and I'm doing it as a uh, system so that even though I'm logging into the root user, I can still do that. This asterisk here at the end is very important because otherwise it'll basically just get stuck on this and not continue through to actually open up things like the open box session. Uh, but the asterisk means it's opening up in the background. So FEH, image tool, BG fill, fill the background, act as wallpaper, etc wallpaper.png. Remember we copied it into the folder um, by copying it into the temporary directory and then it's compressing. Now tint2 opens up the little bar at the bottom of the screen. And then finally, uh, but not least, uh, exec open box session. And this will open up our open box session so we can do things like have multiple windows. Awesome. A dot profile. Typically this is not recommended, but it does work for our use cases. Uh, what this does is it's just a script that runs when you automatically log into a user. Uh, and so what is it doing here? It is setting up the udev and then running startx. So let's walk through this real quick. A getty in the init tab is automatically logging you into root. Great, we're logged into root. Then it runs the dot profile because we've automatically logged in. Uh, it sets the devd file and then runs startx, which then runs the x init rc. I'm just gonna go through, launch your audio server, launch your wallpaper, launch your taskbar, uh, launch your open box session and we're good to go. Now I have a dot, uh, I have a setup dot sh. Um, this might actually be useful in some cases. Uh, if you're booting into the machine and you notice it's not running right away, uh, you'll want to run forward slash etc forward slash setup dot sh because it will put all these in the correct directory. Now this happens for some people. Uh, I have not actually found a solution to this yet. Uh, for some people, you actually have to just go through and then run this. So if you have a solution, um, leave it in the comments below. I recommend uh, helping me out with this so I can upload this to the GitHub repository and help people in the future. But in, in other words, what does the setup program do? Well, what the setup program does is it creates a directory, uh, root.config. Uh, uh, and then this is where we're going to be unpacking the tint2 configuration and the open box configuration. Um, and then we're going to be copying in our .xinitrc and our .profile files to the root folder. Uh, like I said, for some reason it only wants to set things in the .etc folder, so I found this is a great workaround. Now, message of the day uh, is a thing that just pops up on your screen when you log in. This says, welcome to SciGoS. You probably saw that at the beginning of the video. Finally, we've got a, just a ton of different uh, things we're adding to different levels of uh, a, a different open RC things we're adding to the runtime. Um, I'm adding UDEV and DBUS. The rest of this is default in the gen APK OVL boilerplate. And then finally, this right here is the file that tars the temporary folder and then adds it to your image. Now, I am not going to show you the full process of creating one of these things. Um, I do have a, let's see real quick, build.sh. Now, what am I doing? I can just load this in VS Code. I have a little script here that will automatically run this whole command and then all the arguments afterwards so you don't have to worry about that. Um, sh, a ports, scripts, mkmidge.sh, tag edge, outdoor, 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 I'm a Linux developer, I never go outdoors, out directory, uh, so if you have an ISO folder, it'll put the finished ISO file in that ISO folder. Uh, this is telling the system which architecture to use, we're going to be using 64-bit. Um, this is telling it what repository to pull your Alpine image from. Now my internet sucks here, 
So this process of pulling everything from here will literally take like an hour. It's horrible. Um, you want to make sure you're including extra repository because now this is what killed me. This literally got me stuck for a month trying to figure this part out. A ton of these packages, uh, the X work package is, uh, they're technically considered community packages. So unless you have this right here, it's actually going to error out the process and not let you continue. And then profile, Saigo. Lovely. So once I'm in script, I can just run build.sh and it will do the process of running this whole thing. Like I said, it's gonna take me an hour to run this, so I am not running it. Go away, go away. Let's CD into my ISO file, I mean my ISO folder. I've got alpine-sigo-edge-x86-64.iso. And this will be the output of your script, is it'll create a little file like this. Now you can pretty easily uh, SFTP into your host machine if you're running Linux. Um, I forgot what my IP address is. Let's see what that is. Uh, there you are. Okay. All right, so this is how we SFTP into the system. SFTP, my IP address. Please do not hack me. Um, 168.1.20. Put my password in, and we're connected. So if I'm in this directory, I could just put like ALP and then press tab and it'll finish it. Once that's done. Oh, okay. So it's actually erroring out because I've already done this before. Um, but if the file wasn't there, then it would move it over. So I've already created this exit. And there we go. You will have your very own .iso file in your home directory that you will be able to put on a thumb drive, send to a friend, load into a thing, whatever. Now this guide isn't perfect, but frankly enough, uh, this channel has been abandoned for a long time and I couldn't stand something not being put on it. So I hope this at least saves you a couple of months of work. Uh, if you're curious about the process, uh, let me know what you plan to do with this in the comments if you have any plans. If not, that's cool. I appreciate you sticking around for as long as you have. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you wanna see anything new in the future. I do not post consistently, and so there is no other way to know. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like, and if you didn't, I don't blame you. And with that said, I hope every single one of you has a fantastic evening, or whatever it is when you finally watch this. Thank you.